Good evening, everyone. Are you awake? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Were you here last night? Yeah. So let me have a quick review of what happened last night. And I think the same as I, I had, you also experienced that you were blown by the truth, but you were kept intact as well, right? Last night, our brother Ravel tackled about what? What's the title? Beware endangered species. And what remained in your thoughts last night? I remember when I, when I heard the feedback, one occupant of mine said, You know what, ma'am? I really could relate when Kuya Ravel said that we become bitter whenever we hear about love. Whenever I, I, would, I would count the days towards February 14, and I would feel like, oh, single pa rin ako. <laughs> and I know you could also remember well the phrase last night. It says, we pick, what? We pick too soon. Things are a lot prettier when allowed to what? To bloom. And this evening, this evening I will bring you to a topic that is very close to my heart. For the past weeks, we have been thinking how, how we would reach you, how this Thanksgiving series would, would relate well to young people like you. And yes, we have thought of tough love, but God redirected it and changed it into a love quest. And this evening, the title of my message is Mr. or Master. Is it Mr. Right First or Mr. Set Apart or Miss Right First or should it be the Master? First. You know what? The choice that we make for a person today to court, to become engaged with, to marry, anytime we make such a choice, we are reflecting our spiritual level at the time we make the choice. Simply saying that the time you made the choice reflects where you are spiritually. It can also say, it also pertains that when you are partially spiritual, most likely someone or that person who is partially spiritual would make a choice towards a person who is also partially spiritual. And let's go to that deeper. For someone who is outside the church, most likely, because of the spiritual status that that person is in, that person would choose also someone who loves to be outside the church. To be outside the church. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? Four years ago or years ago, the statistics, the statistics of marriage is one out of four marriages, one divorce out of four. One is to four ratio. But now, any guess? Do you think it lessened? Do you think it went down to zero? Huh? What? Four is to one. <laughs> Did you know that lately, the statistic says that it's one for every two marriages. So count. One marriage, second marriage, one of the two marriage would come or end up to a divorce. And good thing, if the other marriage 
that left was left intact is happy. But sometimes, even if the family or that couple is not divorced, they are left unhappy. So we have a big problem. We have a very big problem here about relationships and marriage. And on top of that, inserts the marriage of man to man and woman to woman. Where would relationship thrive in this generation with those kind of challenges? That's why we are here to talk about love quests, about relationships. And I believe that the one of the concrete reasons for this demeaning and very discouraging challenge is that too many folks nowadays, too many of us here nowadays, nowadays tells that, oh, I have to get a boyfriend before I, I graduate. Or before February 14, I have to answer that guy. I have to, I have to court that lady before time runs out. Everybody in the group has a sweetheart already. Oh my, I'm left out. Pressure. Ka pressure, mom. But you know what? Too many folks are choosing a mate before they, cho- before they choose the God that created the mate. You know, the reason why there are a lot of marriages that ends in divorce is that too many folks nowadays, too many young people full rush into relationships and ends up fools. Too many young people nowadays rush in entering relationships without even thinking about the God of relationships they say leave god alone come on these things are, that's too spiritual we're just having relationships right why bother about going to church why bother about attending those seminar they won't relate to us anyway they don't know what we're doing they're already old these days we have modern age our parents doesn't know about it we don't need We don't need to pray about it. I think all the songs we have learned can tell us all about the secrets of having good relationships. Leave God alone. He doesn't have a business in this relationship. And ladies, gentlemen, if anything I say tonight would feel uncomfortable would, would, would make you feel uneasy. That's why we have prayer. If anything would strike you straight to your head and to your heart, that's why we have prayer. If there is something so hard for you to digest, Mom, ang tigas, hindi ko malunok. That's why we have prayer. If you can't take anything that I'm telling you right now, Leave it to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't talk it to me. Take it to the Lord in prayer and leave it there. Marriage will test or relationships will test everything. Will test everything you are. You know what? I thought earlier, years back before I before I even met the wonderful man that I have, I thought that relationships are just an easy thing. After reading all the books, I love reading books. I read about love and relationship books. I read about how to deal with men, how to be a woman, and things like that. And after reading that, I thought, oh, mani, kayang kaya. But you know what? When I entered relationship, it's a bittersweet experience. Yes, it's hard work. It's hard work. 
And much more, much more, it's a hard work. Because entering into a relationship, much more moving, setting your eyes into marriage will take so much of you and so much of who you are. It's like taking an electric fan, putting it on the table, it's, it's not assembled yet, or a much more complicated thing, things that you don't know how to set, and you put it on the table, you're facing it, and you don't know what to do about it. And you don't know what to do about it. And the person who is really not spiritual has no business entering a relationship. You heard me right. A person who is not spiritual, who, do, who, who does not want God in their lives, has no business in a lasting relationship, much more to marriage. Much more to marriage. This decision about relationship, about love quest, is a spiritual decision more than an emotional decision. Maybe you'll think, Mom, feel ko talaga siya. Feel ko talaga siya, Mom. Bakit mo siya gusto? Mom, kasi, he makes me happy. In my mind, I think, bananas makes me happy. Ice cream makes me happy. But mom, he really makes me happy. You know what? All his jokes. Oh, mom. Lahat talaga, mom. Tinawanan ko na, mom. Walang sumablay. And you know what, mom? We talk a lot. But in my mind, I would ask, So what do you talk about? What does he say? of your life and you will tell me you will bravely confidently tell me that because you are happy you will enter that relationship dogs make you happy right who among you here have pets even dogs makes you happy so it's more than happiness right it's more than that it's more than that spark in the eyes every time your eyes meet we have to go deeper and deeper. So, ma'am, what happens if I choose Mr. Right first? What happens if I, I, think, I think I can put God later in my life when we're already settled? Because she might graduate or he might graduate. Mom, you know, it's hard. Can I just rush in and grab the opportunity? I think God will understand. I think he's, he's religious in his own ways. I think he has a relationship with God in his own way. I do not have to judge that, ma'am. What will happen if we will go after the mister or the miss first? First point, we will be what? We will be blinded. We tend to see the looks rather than the character. You know what? I have, God has given me a privilege to talk with young ladies who have relationships and with wives who have been in marriage. And you know what? It's ironic. It's really ironic. I don't want to laugh at it, but sometimes it's funny. When girlfriends would tell 
Ay, ma'am, I, I think um, I saw his bad, bad side, but um, I think it's justifiable. Maybe he will change later or um, it's not, it's still tolerable, I think. But on the other side, the wives would say, oh, my husband is like this, like that. I have seen it when we were college. Had I known, had I known when we, were in, when we were in college, he was like that already. But now, stress. Grabe siya, oh. Can you see the irony there? When you were yet sweethearts, we tried to hide everything. We tried to hide all the blind spots. We tried to hide, we tried to close our eyes. We only see, grabe ma, macho ba? Mama, ang guapo talaga niya. But most of the time, it's too late that we realize everything that we have closed our eyes, lahat na nilampas ang lahat, and everything that we have pushed aside, okay, um, he, is, he is so tamad, okay, it's okay, I will be diligent for him anyway, I can do his assignments. That would be the same complaint that you will have when you get married. So first, what happens? What happens when we go to Mr. and Miss first? We get blinded. We get blinded. Most of the time we justify, he will change. And I can tolerate it, I think. He has vices, but it's tolerable. I will try to change him later. But it's the same thing we would complain. It's the same thing. If you will hear, if only we have a lot of married couples here, they would tell you that you'd rather go to the character than the looks. The character, the looks fade. La, ano, magsasag din yan, yung mga muka. The face, the good looks will fade. It will sag, it will be loose. It will fade. But character, it will remain. It will remain. Another thing that can happen if we go first to Mr. is a very sensitive issue. You know what's the issue? It's the bed issues. Yes, ladies, I have to talk about this. It always breaks my heart whenever I would hear stories about someone who had bed issues. And you know what? After that, that lady would try to rationalize, oh, because he loves me. That's why we have to go through that. And I think I didn't give it without exchange. He loves me. He said, I love you when we were in bed. Ladies, you may laugh at it. Because you're not yet there. Or maybe because you're hiding that you have been there. But these bad issues will be real to you if we do not take heed in this instruction. The lady starts reasoning, well, this must be love. And just because you use the word love in bed doesn't mean it's love. It doesn't mean that you use, just because you use love or I love you in bed, that it justifies the meaning of love. Remember, God is love. And God was not in bed with you. God is not in bed with you. So ladies, Ladies, these are just two issues if you go ahead to the mister before you accept the master. First, you can be blinded and next, you will end up into bad issues. You know what? I often hear, 
Ma'am, kung alam ko lang talaga, kung alam ko lang talaga, He looked so calm, He looked so manly, He looked so spiritual. Had I known, I believe with all my heart, ladies, for someone who is guided, for someone who is willing to be guided by the Lord, the Lord will not mislead you. For sure, on the first step of that bed issue, you were warned. You know all the touches there is. At the first step of it, you cannot reason out, Mom, hindi ko kasi alam eh. Sayang, Mom, kung nalaman ko lang. Had I known. But if you are really guided, if you are really guided, the Lord gives you signals way ahead of time. You know it. You saw it. You passed over it. You pushed it aside. Talked yourself around it. Acted like you did not see it because you wanted that person. Ang guapo kasi niya eh. Parang, there's no other person like him in this university. So, I think it's tolerable. Let it go. God does not make fools out of his people. Ladies, get below the surface. Go beyond all that. I'm happy about him. We talk a lot. Go deeper on that. You're about to make a decision that will affect you for the rest of your life. Those favorite colors, those walk around the park, those eating together, go beyond that. Those phone calls, those overnight talk, go beyond that. You're not yet on the real stuff. You're about to make a decision that will affect you for the rest of your life. Time will come, ladies. Time will come when neither of you will be happy. Time will come when eating together would not be as fun as it was when the first time you met. Time will come when there's nothing that you can talk about. When all you have left is silence. And if that's the only reason why you enter that relationship, you'll end up lonely. You'll end up in a mess. If you do not have God in this relationship thing, you will not survive. You will not survive. Far too many choose a mate before they have chosen Jesus and Later on, they want Jesus to fix the mess. Most of the time, we leave Jesus aside. We go to dates, we forget about the worship. We rush together to meet another person, we forget about the Bible. We forget about prayer. We forget about everything. And when everything is messed up, we rush to God we say, Lord, how can you do this to me? Lord, I wanted to obey your right. I thought it was the right way. How can you do this to me, Lord? I'm in an Adventist university of the Philippines. I thought every guy in the campus looks like a pastor. <laughs> I thought every guy in the campus knows how to minister to young ladies. Lord, you disappointed me. You got to fix this. Where in the world do we get the courage to blame God when after all, we were the ones who left him? Where in the world do we get the courage to blame God when after all, we didn't give him a chance to speak to that foolish heart of ours? When all we want to do is ah, make out, paganda, and I'm going to meet, I have a date. Oh wait, 
devotional worship. Wait, I have a phone call. And later on, when we realize that all those phone calls ends, we go to God and say, Lord, I'm desperate. Help me. Isn't that an abuse to a very loving God, ladies and gentlemen? We have been abusing the very one who loves us most. The very God who created us. The only thing that can keep you playing in your worst side is Christ. Deciding who you will marry is the most spiritual decision you'll ever make. And I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord that he helped me make one of the most spiritual decisions I've ever made. We praise God. That's why we are here with this Thanksgiving series because God has been good. God has been good. Ladies, I also once experienced that. I also had those butterfly Feeling on my stomach, those rush of emotions. I thought, gusto na talaga siyang sagutin. I also experienced that. I also counted days when I thought, I want to be with someone. I hope someone would fetch me also. I would see a lot. My room is in 215, where you can see the beautiful scenery of couples. They're at the kiosk. <laughs> And I would say, oh, ang sweet nila. I'm looking through the window and I, and I would say, one day I will be sitting on those kiosks. <laughs> and I will also experience that. I also experience that same thing. But you know what? God has been good. God has given me a song. God has given me a message to, to wait, to patiently wait. And this Thursday, if you will be here, you will hear that song. The title is Waiting. God taught me how to wait. God taught me how to wait, and it was a blessing. It's always worth the wait. Now, okay, ma'am, I think I'm convinced enough with that, that if I go to Mr. first, I would be blinded, and I would come, I would end up in bad issues. So, mom, now, tell me, how do I turn to the master first? How do I go to God? I feel so messed up. How do I turn to the master? First, in Psalm 46, verse 10, it says here, I know this is a very familiar verse. This is a, a song. B. Be still and know that I am God. First point, how to turn to the master is to be still. Ladies, young men, every time you feel like you want to be like fools and rush in, always remember, take a deep breath and redirect your thoughts to God. Relax. Hindi naman pa unahan to eh. It's not about who went in first, but it's about who remained and survived. So if you are still single, praise God. <laughs> diba? Pastor Or Orbe emphasized it. If you're still single, Praise God. Praise God. Be still. No plan you, you or I devise will work better than a God-inspired plan. Always think about it. When you feel like you're tempted, I'm going to answer this man because I think this is the most perfect time. Valentine's Day tomorrow. So it's perfect. Always wait. And reflect and say, no, I would still go to God's plan. And it's always the best plan. 
I tell you, it's always the best plan. When you catch yourself thinking more about Mr. Right or Mr. Set Apart, redirect your thoughts on God. So that's the first point. Be what? Be still. Second, you're very privileged that you came in because the second point is worship. Oh, mom. I think after this series, there will be a lot of people coming in for worship. I hope. I hope and pray that there will be a lot of young ladies and young men who will go to worship. And in worship, God isn't seeking the worship. God actually doesn't need us to worship him. He has a lot of angels. The angels can do a lot a far better worship than what we can offer. But you know why we, have to off- why, why we have to offer worship? God, is in, God isn't seeking the worship, but the worshiper. It's actually all about you. Every time you enter the worship hall, you have to realize this is God's way to call me. It's not about how you pray. It's Every time you, you approach God, it's not about how you, will, how you will deliver your message, how you will sing. It's about how you will connect yourself to God. It's about the worshiper. He wants you to draw near to him and enjoy your relationship with him so much that you overflow with praise. You know what, ladies? I thought... This God thing isn't real. I thought those who have composed lovely religious songs didn't really mean what they wrote about it. Some would write, the longer I I serve him, the sweeter it goes. Some would say, Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I thought those are just book-based songs. But it was just later that I realized there is something deeper why those songs were composed. It's the connection of the composer to the Lord. And if you want to know more about the master, you join worship. It's not only about the congregation you enter in, but it's yourself. You put yourself in worship. Whether you go down the hallway, you can sing your worship, you can tune your minds to God, you can sing your praise, and you can offer God worship. You can offer God worship. Your praise forms a throne from which God reigns. And you know what? What will happen If you have enjoyed this worship, if you have cherished worshiping the Lord, if you have cherished being with the Lord every time, did you know that a woman, a woman who discovers the power that accompanies praise will be strengthened to love her mate when loving him is difficult? If you learn to love the Lord, if you learn to worship the Lord, this will put, the, this will put a throne of the God into your heart and it will overflow. When you finally go into a relationship, even if that man would go to his worst and even if it's hard to love that man, you will still find it possible because it overflows from your heart of worship. Because you realize the Lord is so loving. The Lord forgives. He doesn't count your wrongs. So even if it's hardest to forgive, you would go to God and say, Lord, because you are good, I would get from you the forgiveness that I will offer to this man. And you know why? Why marriages end in divorce? Because forgiveness And reconciliation is not there. But if you tune your heart and your life to worship, 
The more you get to know the Lord, the more you realize that you are so loved and you cannot but love people in return. Next, read the Bible. I think every time we have our worship, morning, I've always emphasized this. Read your Bibles. You know what? I thought Bible is just a history book. When I was in high school, high school, I thought, oh, I'll just I'll get to read this when, I'm, when I go to church. I'm assigned to do the scripture reading. But after that, I think it can be set aside and I can read all the things I want to read. I thought it's just a history book. But when I'm, I finally appreciated it, I saw that it's a love book filled with counsels on how to stay and, rem and enjoy relationships. The Bible, as you read the Bible, you will get to appreciate that you don't do it alone. You get to appreciate that you don't enter a relationship alone. Do you want to enter a relationship alone? <laughs> no, I mean, you don't do it alone. You don't, you don't assemble things alone. You do it with God. And that makes a lot of difference. We thought that independence is freedom. You know what? It's scary. The moment Eve left Adam and left God's presence, he became independent, but he was enslaved. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in total dependence on the word of God that we set our lives to freedom. It's ironic that when you finally learn to depend on God, to rely on God, that's the only time that you are freed from all the blindness this world can give you. When the song would say, don't forgive, the Bible say, forgive. When the, when the, word, when the, when the world would say, follow your heart, the Bible says, the heart is deceitful. When the Bible says, go with the emotions, the Bible says, you should think wisely and you should think whatsoever is lovely and all the things that is pure and noble. So read your Bibles. Ladies, you don't want to wait until you graduate before you read your Bible, you're missing a lot. And it's just lately I said, oh, had I known that Bi the Bible is very important to me, I, I should have read, I would have read it when I was still in elementary or when I was in high school. I missed a lot of years of counsel. I had made wrong decisions and I regret those. But God has been gracious because he allowed me to appreciate the Bible. It is where God's voice is heard. Reading the Bible gives you wisdom for your relationship. So every time you feel down, every time you, every time you, you want to know more about, Lord, what, I sh what should I do, do with this man? Lord, how would I deal with this person? Lord, how do I deal with my sisters? What do I do now that I'm single? What do you want me to do? The Bible will tell you. You just have to listen and to hear his voice. Lastly, number four is prayer. I cannot encourage you enough. Prayer has been a wonderful, wonderful experience, especially now that I'm in a relationship. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, there would be time that even if you love that person, even if I love him so much, there would be time that I cannot reach him. He would be so down that you cannot reach him. And I experienced that. There were times that I was so down, there were times that he was so down, we could not do anything to reach each other, but prayer made it possible. Prayer makes it possible for you to reach someone when he is in a very 
unreachable state. So don't miss out prayer. Someday, if you will be in a relationship, you will find a lot of flaws in your partner. Go to your knees. Pray about it. Don't go nagging. Ikaw kasi ganito. Ikaw kasi, ba't ka nanligaw sa akin? Don't blame the don't blame the man. When in fact may involvement ka doon, sinagot mo eh. 'Di ba? Hindi ka naman pinilit, ni naman your mouth was not forced to say that yes. You were there, opened your eyes and involved with all your brain and heart. You were there when you said yes. And now you would go nagging, you would You almost eat that person. Had I known that you're not a gentleman, I wouldn't have answered it. Stop doing that. Let us stop doing that. We need to pray. We need to pray. It says in Mark 11:24, I'm reading from the the message translation. That's why I urge you Ada. That's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything. When you say everything, walang tira doon. So if you if you are constipated, if your mate is con- constipated, pray about it. Seriously. If you have a dilemma, if something worries you, pray about it. Go to your knees. Raging from small to large, include everything as you embrace this God life and you'll get God's everything. Do you want to get God's everything? Do you want to experience God's best? Pray about it. Pray about it. You know what? I'm almost to end. There are two ways to be lonely. Who among you here would want to be lonely? There are two ways to be lonely. First, one is to be by yourself. You're literally lonely. You're by yourself. Second, the worst loneliness that you can experience is to be in a relationship and discover that when you fall and when you need a helping hand, your partner is not there. And we do not want you to experience that. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not want you to experience loneliness even if you are in a relationship. And that only happens when you go to Mr. before you go to the master. Love is a big word. Only God qualities can sustain a happy, holy, healthy relationship. And in Matthew 6.33, this is a very famous verse. It says, in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God Except when choosing a mate. Is it there in your Bible? I've been looking for a translation that has this. Because many people or young people have applied this. They say, oh, sicky first, sicky first in my studies, health, family, sicky first. But in my relationship, my heart, no, it's an exception. No, Lord, don't touch my heart. I can manage this. I'll seek you on other things but not my heart. I think I can do well on this, Lord. Leave me alone. Is it in your Bible's translation? I'm looking for the Bible translation that has this. No, it's not there, right? Because this exception when choosing a mate is not really there. Your choice of a mate is God's concern. So seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness. And then all these things, including a wonderful man and a wonderful woman, will be added unto you. Will be added unto you. I wanted to bring you to the wonderful love story in Genesis 24. Is it familiar? Does it ring a bell? What story is there? Whose story? Isaac and Rebecca. You will notice there in verse chapter 20, Genesis 24, chapter, uh, chapter 24, verse 7. Uh, verse 6, make sure that you do not take my son back there. Abraham said, the Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. First, the Lord, it was emphasized there that Abraham believed that the Lord will send an angel to the servant to look for a wife. Another instance, it's in verse 11. The servant, he had the camels. Oh, no, it's in verse 12. The servant, then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today i hope this would be our prayer i hope this would be our prayer and next 15 before he had finished praying rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder ladies keep on prayer praying men keep on praying Put yourselves closer to God, and you know what? Just before you end your prayer, that wonderful man and woman will be right there. I had experienced that. I never thought this wonderful man would come into my life just in time. I almost forget that I'm going to have a sweetheart. I was so busy. I enjoyed the Lord so much. I was all out in the ministry. After my duty days, I would go to Malave and all the dor and, and, and the dormitories that we will have revival. And I was filled. But it's there that we met and God showed how wonderful the God he is. How wonderful the God he is. So don't rush. Don't look for, where's Mr. Wright? Is that him? Go to the master. Go to God and just before you finish your praying, someone will be there. And in verse 26, then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord. Then the man bowed down. After he met the, the wife, he bowed down and worshipped the Lord. He gave thanks to the faithful God who have guided him all throughout who have made his journey successful. Now, let me ask you, do you believe that Jesus is concerned about your love story? Do you think that he has his best plan for you? Do you think he would, he would mind guiding you how to, how to choose or where to go, how to act? Yes. Do you believe that he has your best interest at heart and that he would never mislead you? That if you follow him, you're setting yourself to the best, most meaningful, most fulfilling relationship imaginable? Ladies and gentlemen, don't get desperate. Don't get intimidated with a calendar in your house. Don't get intimi intimidated by your age. Oh, I'm turning 30 and I'm still single. It's Valentine's Day and it's, it's Lover's Day and I'm still single. There are people who are age 40 and they're not grown. 
to know that. You can be at age 50, 60s, and you have not grown yet because you have not given your life to God. And even if in that age, you will still not be ready to go into a relationship. Age has nothing to do with the being, with being ready to get married. Age has nothing to do with being ready to get into a relationship. And a relationship. What makes you ready is connection with the Lord that created you and created the person you're going to be involved with. Isn't that lovely? Does it give you a, a light heart to think that everything will be in place in God's time? I do not need to worry. I do not need to put on all the makeup that I have just to make myself a display for a man that will come and rush to take me. Let God do the math. Let God do everything for you. What makes you ready is a connection with the master. So let me conclude with this. The first step that must be taken in finding your mister or miss is to get your own relationship with the master of love. Ladies, I could not convince you enough. I experienced it myself. God never failed me. And that's the first thing. It's not about knowing the definition of love. It's not about knowing how to cook. That's not the first thing to get into a relationship. The first thing that you have to take note to be ready for a relationship or to be ready to meet Mr. and Miss is to get your own relationship with a master of love. Remember, the person you're going to be with is created by God. Remember that the person you're going to be with is created by God. So ladies and gentlemen, ask him. Ask him. Let's pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, after all have been said and done, we bring glory unto your name. Lord, you have been good and is always good. Had it not been for your grace, we wouldn't have this truth and we cannot share it. But because you have been faithful, because you are a God who guides, we praise you for the message that we have heard. We pray for this young lady and young men as they continue to build relationship with you. Oh Lord, we pray. We pray that you will put a hedge around them, that you will protect them, and that they will see how wonderful a life that is centered in you. Lord, we pray that we will never miss out a love life with the author of love. We pray, dear Father, that we will so we will be enamored to you that we will not problem anymore how to find Mr. and Miss set apart, but we will continually walk towards you and let you bring and let you help us to choose the right path. Father, we do not want to do it on our own. We need you. We need your help. In this world where everything seems to be in a fast face we pray dear lord that we will not go with the flow we pray dear lord that the holy spirit will guide us the holy spirit will lead us lord and that we will not be deceived we do not want to experience heartbreaks dear lord we want to experience heart burst with you thank you so much for your love and your grace that was written in bold letters let thy will be done in jesus name